Well, FIFA World Cup action continues on Wednesday with two-time champions Argentina among those fighting to make the last 16. Thankfully for Argentina, their fate remains with them as a win against Poland will secure their advance. Let's have a look at the matches set for Wednesday and how the groups stack up. Group C, Poland versus Argentina. Uh, Saudi Arabia, they face Mexico. And in Group D, we'll have Tunisia playing France um, with Kylian Mbappe at the helm. Australia versus Denmark. Well, this is how the table looks now. So for Group C, we have Poland at the top of the table on four points, having played two matches. Argentina, they have a total of three points. Uh, just a, um, a match ago, they were at the bottom of the table. Saudi Arabia also won three points and Mexico having played two matches, um, a goal difference of negative two, just one point. In Group D, France at the top of the group, they've won two out of their two matches, a total of six points. Australia on three, Denmark and Tunisia both have one point each. All right, so as we said, Simon Evans is still with us. Simon, Argentina, they have a big assignment against them. Uh, how do you see that turning out for them? I'm already nervous and I'm I'm still questioning you on and the game is not on. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, Argentina have got to, you know, come through this uh, this group stage. They just they just got to get it done. And and I think I think, you know, Poland are gonna be uh, going out there knowing they need a result as well. So it's it's not gonna be a, a walk in the park, they're a well set up side uh, Poland. And of course, they do have, as we keep saying every time we mention Poland, but you can't ignore it. They've got Robert Lewandowski, who's got his World Cup goal finally. And um, it's going to be an intriguing one. But, um, you know, if, if Argentina can't, can't take care of this, then, then we're going to be looking at uh, a real uh, meltdown scenario there. Do you expect Lionel Scaloni to tinker with the team? Any changes that we are to expect? I mean, you might look at one or two things, but I don't. I don't expect him to make radical changes. No, they've got to go with what they've settled out, out their plan to do. This is this is a big game for them, and they, and they've got to go out there with the similar game plan that they've had. Because you know, unless you, you're in a total crisis, you don't. I don't think you start messing things around too much at this stage. Yeah, and um, what do you suspect would be Argentina's? Um strategical approach going into the game because neither match that they had played so far they played badly even though they lost their opening game they no. didn't they didn't play badly um poland is a defensively solid team they haven't given up a goal so far in the tournament so strategically what do you think uh, argentina needs to do to ensure they get the result they need Move the ball around a lot. I mean, they've just got to keep the ball, move the ball around. They're good at doing that and just wear out the poles, I think, really. Because I don't think I don't think Poland, coming into this game, you know, on top of the group with four points, they're not gonna they're not gonna take massive risks, I don't think. They're gonna they're gonna hope to just nullify Argentina. And so they've got to spread the game, keep pushing, and just be very, very patient because you know, Kamel Glick at the back for Poland is somebody who's who's been around for years, played in Serie A. He's he's a big, burly central defender, but he's also very smart. He organises the back line. He's like almost the coach on the field for them, and 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 so it, it will be a tough one. They've got to keep working and keep probing and hope that you know they have the quality up front. We know that obviously yes. uh, in Messi, especially. But um, you know, just. Remember that Poland are going to tire. The more, more Argentina has the ball, the more Poland are going to get tired. Yeah, and of course, the last set of matches in the groups, the games have to be played simultaneously, Simon. So uh, the Saudi Arabia-Mexico game, pretty critical to, you know, the, advance, the advancing teams out of this group. And any slip for Argentina, a Saudi Arabia win could, could send them through. Yeah, I mean Saudi Arabia are on three points. Yeah, so a, a win for them would would uh, would almost certainly send them through. Um, and I think, uh, and what kind of meltdown there would be in Mexico if that was to happen? I mean, Mexico again. You know, have they played well? Not really. They haven't sparkled. Have they been bad? I mean, it's similar to what you were saying about Argentina. There, you know, they, they haven't been terrible, Mexico, but they just haven't really got going yet. And. Uh, 
they've got to, they've got to turn it on against Saudi Arabia. Otherwise, you know, there will be a massive inquest into Me in Mexico into what's going on. But anything could happen in that group. It should be a really thrilling one. Yeah, and uh, Mexico uh, conquer CAF giants traditionally, but they could win and still not advance, depending on what happens in the, the Poland-Argentina game. So um, a group that we'll be looking closely on on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, let's move quickly now to the other group because the Frenchmen are... It's not easy, first of all, Simon, to repeat as World Cup champions. We've always seen it twice. Italy, 1934 and 1938, and then Brazil, 58 and 62. So we haven't seen a team repeat as champions um, since then. Now, going into this, I don't think the odds had favoured France repeating, but they have looked like they can. Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, all the question marks we had about the players that they had missing um, have been answered because the players who've come in have, have stepped up and done their jobs in those central midfield positions where, you know, obviously no Kante, no Pogba, and also up front where, where no uh, Benzema. So they, they've delivered there. Their squad looks deep. They still look, look like they play the same kind of football, even without those key players. So, yeah, I mean, France looked really good and, and they should be uh, far too strong for uh, Australia, who I'm, I'm, I'm surprised are, are in this position of, of uh, still having a chance on the final, uh, final fixture. Yeah, and Simon, you know, speaking about France being too strong tomorrow against Tunisia, do you expect Didier Deschamps to rest the players? You know, no need to play um, Kylian Mbappe and whatnot because they've already done what they had to do up to this point. It's always a tricky one, that, for coaches, isn't it? Because, yes, on the one hand, you don't want players to get injured. You want them to, to recover their energy as, as well as they can. So resting seems like a, a, a smart move. On the other hand, you can lose momentum very easily. Um, you know, we've seen that in, in the past in tournaments. Irigo Saki doing it with Italy once. And, you, you know, you leave out your players, you get a bad result and suddenly there's questions being asked and, and the morale is affected and so on. So there must be quite a temptation to say, just go out there, enjoy yourself, win the game. We'll t and I think the five sub thing as well allows you to do that. It allows you to go out there and maybe get 2-0 up and then rest players. So I, I, would, I, would, I would lean towards the latter on that. But who knows? I mean, you know, they can afford to, to, to rest people if they want to. Well said, Simon, and we'll talk again before the week is out, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, OK. All the okay. best. Simon Evans there talking World Cup football with us. We go to break. When we come back, I think it will be time for Mariah's second set of Zone updates. Is it? Yeah.